Saints Row 2 is regarded as one of the worst PC ports of all time. When I first installed the game, the thing ran like it was tweaking out on meth. Other players had a slow, choppy frame rate, and the entire game just sounds and looks like shit. It doesn't matter if you have a high-end rig or a low-end rig, it's a painful experience that covers a spectrum of technical issues. CD Projekt's port of Saints Row 2 was indeed atrociously offensive, but while most people wrote the game off as an anomaly of failure, Mike Watson, Rafael Rivera, and Thomas Jepp, along with the help of many other passionate modders, decided to team up and fix this busted-ass game as much as they could for the sake of the Saints Row community. This resulted in the well-known quick fix Saints Row Power Tools and the legendary mod compilation Gentlemen of the Row. With Power Tools, the game was finally playable. You could play Saints Row 2 on the PC without wanting to scratch your eyeballs out. With Gentlemen of the Row, the additional cheats, weapons, and features made the game even better than the console version. Except, even with all the patches and mods you can get your hands on now, there are still some pretty nasty bugs in the PC port. There's only so much that can be done without having access to the source code itself. Now, Volition wasn't in charge of the PC port. CD Projekt was. And that was all handled through THQ. Well, after Saints Row 3, THQ went bankrupt and the source code for Saints Row 2 became lost. And soon after that, for his efforts of breathing life into what was regarded as a lost cause, Mike Watson was offered a job as the community manager at Volition. This might as well just turn into an Idle Ninja appreciation video at this point, but ever since he joined Volition, he's always been working hard for the community. He could have just left well enough alone and let the PC port of Saints Row 2 exist as this beautiful disaster, but by God, after years of searching, he found it. He found the source code for Saints Row 2. I mean, the lore behind this is just crazy. For the longest time, we were all told it was never going to happen. I mean, of course not. I made a fucking embarrassing video where I explained why it would never happen because it really did seem like it was impossible. Like, maybe the source would turn up in an old warehouse in a decade when we're all dead. But, be <laughs> but against all odds, it was found. And it was only found because Idol Ninja pushed for it. Idol said it best on stream when he says this all feels like they've come full circle. Thomas Jeff got contracted to help fix the port, and the entire event is just a beautiful moment in Saints Row history. What was regarded as the worst PC port of all time could possibly turn into the best PC port of all time, just for the unlikely series of events that made it all possible alone. It's going to be a free patch for anyone who owns the game on Steam, it's going to come with all the console DLC mission packs intact, and of course all the stuttering, crashes, and bugs are being fixed. Now the big question, when is it going to be released? We don't know yet. Thomas Jepp, aka Minimal, is doing all the technical work himself, with Idle Ninja acting as the project manager of sorts. So this is a two-man crew, but they're working hard on making it the best Saints Row experience it could possibly be. Now I know you console players are probably feeling indifferent about this, but it is a big deal. Classic Saints Row is finally getting some love, and hopefully you'll be able to play Saints Row 2 on a potato. And hopefully that encourages you to get into PC gaming, because if you're not already in, you're missing out. I can also see this reviving the multiplayer community. Now you don't have to deal with those stupid fucking third-party shit apps that give you viruses or Russian adware. I can't understand what they're trying to sell me, I hate this shit. Now everything is going to be handled right through Steam's networking. Co-op is going to be easier than ever, no more of those dreaded failure to find host messages, and no telling what else could happen in the future. Right now the patch is confirmed, but they have the source code. So there's a chance we can get a Saints Row 2 remaster out of this. THQ Nordic seems to be on a remaster kick lately, so who knows? And fingers crossed, maybe this will bring us a Saints Row 1 port, or remaster with it but I'm getting ahead of myself. That was the exciting news for Saints Row's 11th anniversary. But since I've got you here, let's go ahead and make this a Saints Row news roundup so I can get back to my hibernation pod. A new Saints Row game has been announced. That's literally all we know. Is it Saints Row 5? Or a reboot? Or some weird spin-off that nobody wants? Nobody knows. Well, a few people know, but we're probably not going to find out until next year, so have fun speculating. Also, a Saints Row movie is in the works. For real this time. Who the fuck saw that coming? 
It's being directed by F. Gary Gray, who has directed some of the most iconic rap and hip-hop music videos of all time, along with feature-length films like Friday, Be Cool, Straight Outta Compton, and Uh Oh, and Oh Yeah, Saints Row 1 became backwards compatible for the Xbox One. I didn't talk about that. And then God's Hand decided to freeze the multiplayer servers using an exploit that forced everyone to join his Xbox Live group if they wanted to play. Many new players got confused, frustrated, and quit, and any chance at reviving the multiplayer community on Xbox One died a quick death. God's Hand was then banned on Xbox Live, and he's currently working on his own PC remake of Saints Row 1. Godspeed and we wish him the best. Finally, where have you been, Flippy? Why aren't you feeding me a stream of belligerent video game rants anymore? Well, young one, let me tuck you in bed, get you all nice and cozy. I'm going to the store to get a pack of cigarettes, and when I return, I'll tell you all about it.